hi there welcome back to the channel and in this video we are going to see how can we optimize some of our api call and reduce the network congestions and we are going to do this using devounce function in javascript which is one of the most asked interview questions so without any delay let's begin now imagine you have an e-commerce application and what you want to do is whenever user comes to your search bar and start typing something here so based on whatever the user is typing you want to make an api request to the server and show the list of different products in the browser so let's see how can we do this so let's go to the vs code and uh, let me take you to the html file so here you can see there is just one input element this is what you can see out here and it has got an id of input so let me grab this inside our javascript file so here i'm simply going to name it as input and i'm going to grab it using document dot query selector and since it's an id i'm going to use has symbol now i need to listen to this input event so i'm going to attach the event listener out here and uh, the input event is going to be input itself and here obviously it is going to be a callback function so let me pass a function out here and this callback function is going to call a function called fetch data or more like i want to call it as regular fetch and you're going to know why i'm making it regular phase in a moment so now let me define this function here above so i'm just writing a function out here and this is going to be regular fetch data and uh, this function is going to be async function so let me write async first now here i need to do my api call so in order to do api call i'm going to use famous api service called json placeholder so let me go out here and type for json placeholder and here we have in the list so here you can come down and you can get different api requests so i want to search for post so if i click here i'm going to get some different post out here so let me copy the url and let us come to the vs code here now let's face the data so i'm going to create a variable called response and obviously i'm going to write a wait and i'm going to fetch the data and here i'm going to pass the api url that i have grabbed and the second line this is going to be data since we are going to get the data and this is simply going to be response dot json again and here i need to write a wait one more time so that's it and now we are going to get our data so let me log the data out here so i don't want to log the entire uh, elements or the entire data i just want to log the first data or the first element of the array and from there i want just want to grab the title out there so let's see let's go to the browser and see whether it's working or not and let me type something out here and as you can see whenever i type it is sending an api call out here so let me refresh this one more time and uh, let me type hello out here so whenever i type hello you can see how many times it's hitting the api request so it's hitting five times so let's just say user wants to search for iphone in your e-commerce application so the time user types iphone it is hitting 11 api request to your server which is really bad here your user just wants to search for a single iphone so but in the back end your application is hitting 11 api requests to your server just for searching one iphone which is going to create network congestion and it is going to overload your application now we need to optimize this api call so in order to do that we use devounce function in javascript which is quite popular and using devounce function we can reduce the number of api call we are making to the server which is going to return the congestions in the network so let's go to the vs code and see how we can improve this 
API call or how can we optimize this API request that we are making it. The goal is simple. We want to reduce the number of API call we are making to the server. So for that, we are using something called Devounce in JavaScript. So let's get started. Now this time I'm going to comment this out and here I'm simply going to write fetch data. Okay, type out there. Now let me write fetch data function. Okay, again, let me just write fetch data that's all i need as of now okay it's giving me regular fetch somehow let me remove this fetch data and let me create a function out here so here i'm going to declare this fetch data as a const and this fetch data is going to call a function called devams now what is this devams function that we are going to create right now okay so let us create this devons function here so let me create so i'm just writing it as devons and this is what we are doing and this devons function is expecting an callback function so here it is going to expect a callback function and i'm going to name it as get post and since this devons function is expecting a callback function which is get push so let's create a callback function out here so this is going to be a async function which is going to be responsible for fetching the api data that's why i named it get push and here this is how we are going to do an api call let me just copy this data out here and let me copy and paste it out so this is what it is doing it is simply making an api call and it we are passing this function as a callback and we are expecting out here in this devons function now let me hit enter and i'm going to declare a variable called timeout now here and after timeout what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply return a function out here so this is what it is going to do it is going to return a function and in this function First of all, we are going to clear our timeout and this clear timeout is going to clear this timeout. So if you're not understanding anything here, just hang with me. I'm going to explain each and every lines of code that is I'm writing out here. And here I'm simply going to write timeout and here I'm going to write set timeout. Just hang with me. I'm going to explain all this thing that I'm doing out here. And you know, this set timeout function is going to expect a callback function and a timeout function in order to delay. I want to delay it for one second. So that's why I'm giving 1000 out here. And here I'm going to call this get post callback function, which we are getting. So this is the get post callback function that we are getting. And I'm going to call it out here. Now, let me explain you this entire process in detail. So whenever user types something on an input field, this event listener is going to listen and it is going to call this fetch data function. And this fetch data is going to call the devons function in return. And it is having a call callback function out here. Now, as soon as this devons function is called, now we are going to get inside the devons function and we can see we have a variable called timeout being declared out here and after that we have a return statement so this devons function is returning something but before that we have a function called clear timeout and it is going to clear the timeout so what is clear timeout function clear timeout function basically clears the timeout set by the set timeout functions you know what set timeout do a set timeout function expects two argument one is a callback function that we are passing and here we can do something and here it is going to expect another delay timer here i'm passing it 1000 that means this set timeout is going to run after one second it is going to run this get post out here but what is going to happen is since we are clearing this timeout so this one second which is set by the set timeout that is going to be clear out by this clear timeout function and until and unless user stops typing something 
then only this set timeout function is going to execute so whenever user comes to this browser and starts typing for the product in the search bar it is not going to make any api call as soon as user stops typing something and soon the one second passes away after that it is going to make an api call so let's see here let me type iphone out here and you see it's not making any api call once after i stop typing iphone and after that one second it is making an api call and i'm getting this data now let me type op out here see it's not making an api call it is making after one second i stop typing in the source bar so this is how we are going to optimize our api call if we couldn't have done that then you can see what the regular function is doing so let me comment this fetch data out here and let me uncomment this regular fetch data out here and now let me come here and let me refresh this and let me see whenever i'm typing an iphone out here see as soon as i type it is already making six api request to the server so this is how we are writing our regular api request that we are making to the server but once we optimize this using devounce function it is going to make less api request to the server which is going to optimize our web application so now whenever i type iphone out here it is just going to make only one api call and if i type something after that after one second it is going to make another api call so this is how we can optimize our api call that we are making to the server and increase the performance or enhance the performance of our web application and all this can be done using this devons function this is also one of the most asked interview questions since it is such an important concept so i hope you guys understood something out of it please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel it motivates me to make more such content and i'll see you all in the next video